So hello everybody, I just returned from Superbooth 2024 in Berlin and my voice is still very wasted after partying of three days. First to ensure I'm in Berlin, yeah, it worked out fine. So I met directly with Odo and we went out partying a bit and having some beers and the next day it was already difficult to find the location. Luckily there's lots of signs everywhere with arrows where to go and if you are lost, simply follow the hordes of people going to Superbooth. And again, the weather was awesome in Berlin and as last year it was pouring all over Germany, but but here in Berlin it was beautiful for Superbooth. First stop again the bungalow village and it had the new Super 8 of UDO and it's a little bit spec down Super Gemini so it has the same engine same power but only the user interface for one of the two layers so you need to switch to the second one and have then only one layer of the controls but nevertheless it's a bit cheaper also for the Super Six, there is a new feature. You can get a new keyboard for it, and the new keyboard supports now poly aftertouch. But also, strangely, if you buy it new, you cannot buy it directly with the new keyboard. You have to buy the additional option, which is about 400 pounds, so not very cheap. And then you need to replace it as well. Bit strange nowadays. Again, in the same place, there was a Maya booth again, and previous year there was a Maya MD900, pretty powerful device with four tracks plus a drum tracks plus several MIDI tracks and really good sounding synthesizer algorithms. And this year there's a smaller option available, the Vibes synthesizer, which has the same powerful engine but in a spec down encasing, but currently also with some more features than the big one but these will also be available soon in the bigger device and the talk of a show were not synthesizers but toads because there were this because it's a season where toads are mating and there were some areas restricted for toads only and yeah very interesting at the cork booth they showed the big p3300 but still behind glass and you were not allowed to touch it they are also some sweets and they're still building on this weird thingy which is a mixture of acoustic and electronic instrument and I don't know since how many years already and it's still only a prototype. More on the usable side is a small version of the Chaos Pad with really good sounding algorithm. So this is something to check out. And there were workshops again. Here is one of Bitwig and the Touch Designer, how you can connect the two applications. So here you can, for example, control with gestures, Bitwig or the other way around, create animations which are in sync to the P music playing in Bitwig. And the Bitwig booth was also always packed and you could get Bitwig for half the price because it's a 10th anniversary. And I got introduced to someone from golem.de, which is an online technology portal in German. And I got interviewed about writing open source software for controllers. Again, there were Gesprächskonzerte, the nice idea to do a little bit of talking about a product, but much more making music. And UE was well, again one of the most entertaining and funny ones. And they showed off their new modules as well as some sampled sound from their plugins. Arturia was definitely one of the most notable manufacturers at the show. They had two new names here. The one is the Polybrut 12, a new total flagship for around 4,000 euro and an improved keypad, which can now do also poly after touch, but also has some other features, which I did not fully grasp so far. And even if you have, don't have the money or never plan to buy this thing, you should definitely have a play with it because it's really sounding nice and is so much fun to play. 
Another controversial thing from Arturia is the Astrolab, which allows you to play all their plugins, all their software plugins, in a real instrument and take it with you without the need of a computer. But it has some drawbacks because it has, for example, only two layers. But nevertheless, I'm a bit on the undecided side because it sounds so lovely and playing is lots of fun. And I heard some rumors about it. They might open up their sampling engine, which is also a plugin in there. So you might might be able to load your own multi samples on it in the future and then it might be a better option for live keyboarders. And I heard another rumor that there will be also a plugin not released today for the software package and then as well available for this device. So stay tuned what happens with that thing. Absolutely. And Soma again had another interesting device they create always something weird stuff which is not for me but i know a lot of people love it and i don't and i totally dig that they're doing such stuff there can't be any event without lego so also super booth now has a little <laughs> lego stuff on there you have a full studio built out of lego and also the traditional manufacturers were there so your yamaha's kurzweil and also nord roland's still missing again i don't know what's up with them and you could also check out their devices now also the pwm mantis is already cranky sounding soon but pretty interesting and something nobody covered but just really nice a prototype from esi so you might know the keyboards which i also cover and support with bitwig and this little device contains now also a full-blown sampler with filter modulation matrix envelopes everything and that's pretty interesting my favorite of the show is the uh, echo cinematic uh, kind of dub delay but also the reverb and a nice sounding eq and not on the cheap side it should be around 400 euro like the other modules but nevertheless something to look out for I feel pretty honored to have a show of, of Sebrolet by Howard Scar, the man himself. And he showed me how to use the MSEC and it's not a simple MSEC. You can even create multiple MSECs and then blend between them with controllers. It's insane. And as you know, Sebrolet 3 is totally free. You can download it and use it. And yeah, get it. So the motorized knob synth is now also available as a keyboard version and it sounds absolutely great. It's my first time I played this synth, sounds really lovely. The user interface might be something you should get used to because the colors, hmm, it's, it's about taste. <laughs> And walking around there were always different musicians playing and here you could hear a glass harp which is also a first time for me and yeah, nice sound. Something I was looking forward to, the Smoke Spectra Vox, which is a vocoder, but I was a little bit disappointed by it because using it as with the voice did not really sound convincing, it's really hard to understand, but it's nice with instruments and all the modulation possibilities you have but for that 700 euro I think is a bit on a too pricey side for me. Another talk of a show, the T05 was really sounding very, very lovely and I'm very tempted to get it. It does definitely not sound like the Take 5 sounds completely different. I think also the effect sounds somehow better and yeah, you should check this out. Totally disappointment of a show, ASM showed an anniversary version and it's silver and they just added 1000 euro to the devices because it's silver. Come on guys, is that real silver? So, sag mal was, and the community. Ah, hello community, uh, we, are, we are sind here auf der NAM, live 2025. <laughs> Das ist quasi eine Rückschau vorwärts. Say it again in English or I have to do subtitles? Do subtitles. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello, community. Hello, the world. Hello, the world. This is the community. We are, we are live here from the NAM 2025. 
Yeah, and this is backwards forward thinking in a view of a little video and thank you very much. Bitwig celebrated their 10th year anniversary with a big party at the Klunkerkranich Club, which is as Berlin as it can get, a club on the top of a parking space and you could look over Berlin from this rooftop club party space and also some very interesting artists were playing different sets. And again, too much beer, but lovely and nice people. So next day, the final Saturday was a bit hard to get up, but luckily, if you could not walk again, there was now the little railway going in the park. So it was a little bit easier to get to the super booth. And this clearly won the prize for the loudest hand of the whole booth. There was acid and techno going on the whole day. Chase Bass, this little sampler is now available in even more weird colors <laughs> and it's also a bit of a controversial product but nevertheless nice to look at and they had lovely shirts. Another highlight for me at the show, the new board Brain Mixer which is a really nice Eurorack mixer with real faders two effect channels and um, mute buttons which work pretty good and lots of different options for breakout connectors also an equalizer is available for it and the interesting thing related to Bitwig with that is that they have also a CV interface and this might be something I will check out in the near future. For mass had a very interesting but weird in a certain way module because it can run VCV rack. So <laughs> virtual modular synth running on a real hardware synth. Oh my. Electro One, which I dig a lot and support for Bitwig and Reaper, has a new firmware and you can do now also your own graphics, also 3D animations as you see in the video. And they showed a prototype of their smaller model, which has eight knobs and a little bit smaller delay, but you can access also the SD card, which is a new thing. And I met also the developer, which supports Ableton. <laughs> and yeah, we had a peace pipe together yeah this has to be mentioned food was again horrible and catering was another disaster with beer empty at eight o'clock but to the rescue the Finhütten again where you can also get a real schnitzel and no late night partying this year because the toads were mating as I told you again but nevertheless you could have some music till eight o'clock at least yeah, I promised you some secrets, so I already mentioned a little bit of stuff in there. I talked to many manufacturers about my tools, so first one driven by Moss, the controller support, there is some interesting sequencer support coming up, which you might not expect, I hope this will work out. Next tool, Convert with Moss, the multi-sample converter. I spoke to several manufacturers about multi-sample support for their device and there is some high interest in that and I will get some devices soon and yeah, stay tuned for that as well. And final one, DAW Project. Also, I heard of interesting companies which you will not expect who will support DAW Project in the future. And this might take a bit of time, but stay tuned for DAW Project. This is also something here to stay. And not to forget, Clap, the Clever Audio plug-in format is definitely here to stay. There will be something really big happening at the end of the year. And after that, I'm sure it will be everywhere. So already it's over. It went by very soon, but it was very intense. And I'll see you next time. Make some funky music.